I didn't know what to expect when I entered the portal, but Indiana was one of the teams that reached out. Uh, I didn't really know a lot about the staff or um, really the, the Indiana program. You know, I knew them for, you know, being in the Big Ten and all that and being play, being able to play, uh, you know, the big teams and all that. But I did research the more I talked to them. and But, you know, Coach Nsiri, uh, quarterback coach, called me and he, he kind of, you know, recognized right away that he's very smart um, and he, he kind of has a feel for – how to be a really good coach in, in, in you know, so I was, I was drawn to that immediately. And then, you know, uh, talking to Signetti and, and being able to see his, um, his history and how he's won basically everywhere he goes and that he doesn't back down to a challenge and stuff like that. And, and, you know, when I entered, I, I wanted to be able to um, compete for a place, uh, compete for a spot um, at a contending team. And, um, you know, when so Coach Signetti said that he's not going into rebuild, he's going into win, as he's mentioned a lot, you know, that really spoke uh, volumes to me. And it was kind of got me interested in coming to visit. Um, and it was just more of the same um, as I was, you know, seeing them in person, meeting everybody, uh, seeing the blueprint that they had in such a short time, right? Because they got, they got, you know, um, sorry, hired very, you know, recent after I entered, right? And so it was, it was kind of uh, amazing to see the, the, the process, the progress they already made to, uh, you know, kind of restart the team and restart the program. Um, and so that was, it became a really clear decision for me and God closed a lot of the other doors. Um, and, and this one was, was an easy decision in the end. You are listening to the Zen Game Quarterback Show, where we go inside the minds of college quarterbacks. In this episode, we discuss Curtis's journey from Ohio to Indiana, where he arrived after an extremely successful career that included winning Mac Player of the Year in 2022. We also discussed the power of faith and resilience and coming back from two major injuries. He described how the second that he stepped foot on campus in Bloomington, he knew that this team was something special and would be able to compete with the best of the teams in the Big Ten and in the country. I hope you enjoyed this interview as much as we did. And if you want to listen to more interviews with elite college football quarterbacks, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and our podcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Yeah, um, I think it was a lot at the end of that 22 season, you know, I, I got injured a couple games before the, the championship um, and being able to not play with the guys and had to watch. Um, unfortunately, we didn't win. And so that, that, that sucked definitely to be on the sidelines, but then knowing that most of the guys were coming back, the team was coming back offensively and defensively. And, and so I felt like we had the group to, to have a good successful run. And, and I didn't, I didn't want to, uh, leave the guys. I mean, it was it was such a core group that we had, um, and, and so uh, I felt like it was unfinished business. So yeah, I just didn't it didn't didn't really even cross my mind, honestly, uh, when I get injured. So. Just a special thing that in, in a time where there's not that type of loyalty, that you were able to show that. And I think that the beautiful thing about the COVID year is athletes are able to use this bonus year to do, as I say, get their graduate degree in their sport somewhere else. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I've seen that already. Coach Nsiri, um has been you know, in the, the Saban system, and he's been around a lot of great quarterbacks, a lot of really great uh, coaches. And so he's already taught me a lot of things I didn't know. And uh, in, in being a six-year guy, that, that can be sometimes hard to find. But yeah, I, f I feel like a freshman sometimes learning because he's uh, he's got so much to share. How early was a football in your hand and what is it with your family that develops football players? Because it's been a good been a good ride for for you and your brother, at least uh, in the uh, both at Ohio and throughout your journey so far. So what what happened within kind of the family to get you playing? What led to so much success for both of you guys? Ironically, neither of my parents uh, were involved in football in any way in, in their uh, careers. But uh, honestly, uh, football came in my hands because of my brother. Uh, being the younger brother, you always want to do what your older brother's doing. Um, and he fell in love with, with football first, uh, fell in love with uh, Brett Favre specifically. And, um, and so I was just uh, wanting to do what he did. Um, I actually started playing tackle football when I was four, turning five that year. Not saying I was uh, productive in any way, but you know, I, I just wanted to to be there. But um, the more I played, the more I got involved, the more I really uh, started to love it as my own. You know, being able to have a brother that's as invested and in, in loves the game as as you do, 
um, it, it's great because you're able to work on things together. You're able to, you know, go out and, and, and throw and um, kind of talk football, right? And so we were able to, to build that connection, build that relationship of, uh, of being brothers, but also, you know, learning from each other and everything. And um, it's great to see him um, be successful at every uh, level he's been at um, and continue to watch him play and, and, and hopefully, you know, be able to, to get to the levels that he's been to um, uh, but yeah, we, we still, uh, talk and, and learn and, and be able to, um, you know, just talk football like we did when we were younger. And so it's great to, uh, to have a brother in a relationship like that. Mm -hmm. Five is early. Yeah. It's, uh, uh I, I don't, I wouldn't advise it, time. uh, for, for my kids in the future. I don't know, but, uh, I, I, I remember I was wearing equipment that was basically the same weight as me. So I wasn't really, I wasn't really productive. Like I said, I didn't really do anything too, too much. So. You're out there. So in some ways it was I mean it was productive. It worked, it worked out. And I think it's one of those things where you saw your brother, he looked good, it was exciting, and you're like, I wanna do that. And your parents are like, Okay, sure. Like you're asking, we'll we'll let you go do it. We'll see what happens. And the desire ultimately paid off. When you get to Ohio, it took you two years to really start playing. Uh he had a super successful career at Ohio. I don't believe you guys didn't do did you guys overlap at all in the 2019, 2020 years? Yeah. 2019 was my freshman year is his senior year. So that was yeah, yeah. one of the better years that we've ever had uh, just because being on the same team was, was something that we never done before. So that was great. Yeah. There was one year, but you were, you were just kind of in that learning phase when you were in your own process, was there ever a doubt about going to Ohio to follow in your brother's footsteps or were there other places you consider or did you ever consider I hadn't mentioned it in the show yet you guys are from Canada so there's a lot of options in Canadian college football also was there thoughts to going and staying home or going to another American college or was it always Ohio it was definitely more than just Ohio um I our, both of our goals was to play in the NFL one day and and play professionally and and so um, the easiest path, especially at that time, it's getting a little easier now, but um, is to play collegiate football in the States and stuff. And so Nathan already made that. He made his journey, bounced around and finally ended up Ohio. And um, I wanted to do the same, but I, I went to high school fully in, in Canada and, and it was hard to get recruited. Um, so thankfully I had the foot in the door with Ohio a little bit, but, you know, it wasn't Ohio or nothing. It was, you know, could I get an offer and then then go kind of prove my prove my worth there whatever wherever I ended up and it just so ended up there was a lot of Mac teams that were interested and I think definitely with the uh, culture and coaching staff that Ohio had it would have been a, a clear pick anyways um, Coach Solich was there and he was obviously uh, the legend that he is and he was at, at Ohio it was like might as well um, join the best best team, uh, best coaching staff in, in, in the Mac and just happened that my brother was there and, and then all the perks of being able to learn from uh, not only my brother, but, you know, the starting quarterback who's, you know, already been very successful for the last two years. So, yeah, it was a win-win. Yeah, he was he was a baller at Ohio, no other way around that. And so it was an easy, easy path to follow. You knew he could be successful and you ultimately were extraordinarily successful at the University of Ohio as well in, in that role. But as you look to the beginning of it, if you could look to 2019, what was the number one thing you learned from being on the bench behind him for that year? Cause I have to imagine it was a different experience. He's been your brother, obviously your whole life, but for this one year, he was your brother and also a very decorated starting quarterback that you were getting to learn from. Yeah, uh, I mean the 2019 season was it was a great great year for for you know the brothers and everything. Um, we actually had a couple brothers on that team that year, which was kind of funny. But uh, just being able to to learn from him was awesome. You know, be able to ask him about questions and all that football related. But you know, overall, I think that that year was built with a lot of adversity, a lot of adversity for him as well. Um, and being able to be front and center and be able to see that um, spoke a lot knowing that it's not all, you know, nice and easy, you know, and, and even though you're, you know, you might be the best player on the team that year, it's, it's still tough. And there's a lot of work that goes into that. Um, and definitely taught me that if you want to be successful, you got to put the time in. Um, and, you know, I remember times that he was, you know, he'd be, you know, 
critical, not critical, I'd say, but harder, you know, and say, you know, you got to work hard because that's what he's doing. Right. And you would see that. And he was always the last guy in the meeting room, you know, on the field. Um, and cause he, you know, he had goals that he wanted to achieve. Um, and me as a freshman, I, you know, as a lot of players that play collegiate football, you cruise through high school because of, you know, your talent, but then you get to college and you got to just work harder than everybody. And that's the only reason you, way you're going to be successful. And so, you know, long story short, that's kind of uh, what he taught me of, of that there's going to be adversity, but you got to be able to work hard and, and through that and continues to do that. And that's why, why he's in the, the spot that he is today. So. Yeah, just a ton of success. I actually didn't know that he grew up idolizing Brett Favre, but what's funny is that the season he played for the BC Lions, it was like a it was like you took Brett Favre and you threw Brett Favre in the CFL. I think you wore Brett Favre's number also. It was uh it was a type of football that wasn't happening in America that year. I mean, we have some very fun quarterbacks in the NFL game right now, but it was uh there was a lot of emulation between kind of Brett Favre's game and, and his game. So kind of, I actually had no clue that that was something that he had looked up to, but very much believe it. So 2019 season, he has some success. You're watching, you're learning. I have to imagine it was a pretty big adjustment. Also just learning the American game in practice. Cause you're playing yeah. this three down game all the way up till mm-hmm. college. And for those listening who maybe haven't watched a Canadian football game, you got a longer field, you got a wider field, you have 110 yards, you have five receivers on the field at pretty much all times. You have 12 players on each side. Receivers can run in motion. It's a very different game mm-hmm. than the American game. But I'll ask you kind of both questions. Number one, what about the Canadian game helped you the most in your transition to the United States where you feel like playing that game maybe made you a better quarterback playing the kind of standard U.S. rules? And then what was the hardest adjustment on the other side of that? I think the the Canadian game is awesome for quarterbacks, especially. Um, it is it is such a passing uh, sport because of all the things that you mentioned. You know, the field's wider, so you got to make a lot of um, of deeper throws. I mean, you you throw a five yard out, it becomes a thirty five yard throw, basically, right? Um, and so it's you know you work on your arm strength definitely if you're going to be successful in the Canadian game, but you pass more because there's only three downs, and so you know you have to you know, get good at, at being able to uh, throw the ball down the field. And, and in high school, we threw the ball a lot because um, not only the weapons that we had, but because of the Canadian game. And I think if you watch, um, you know, the CFL, especially there's a lot more passing than, than run plays and stuff compared to the NFL. And um, so I think that's really exciting. Um, and that, and that's definitely, it was definitely one of the pros I think for playing Canadian football up until college and, and something that uh, helped me a lot you know, and develop me into a player in pastor that I, you know, I'm, I am today. The hardest thing was definitely um, having to basically start fresh from learning all the coverages and everything. When I got to this, to uh, Ohio, um, I remember the, the first meeting that we had, we went over defenses and it was, it was all new for me because there's one less guy on the field. And so, you know, a, a base cover three is different in Canada than the America. And so I kind of had to, you know, forget all the, not forget but kind of just you know put it to the back back burners of of what canadian coverages were because it's going to be all new uh new stuff and, and new learning and so um it was definitely uh you know the start was you know see the guy open throw the ball there and not really reading the coverages to start and stuff until i kind of get a hang of it so <laughs> yeah. i have to imagine the run game was a challenge instinctively also just because as you're reading those defenses and kind of trying to figure out, all right, like where if I'm calling a run play, where the running backs plan to go. Just even if intellectually you pick that up quickly, just not playing in high school games where you're necessarily running the balls in the same formation may have put you like back in that area uh, a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it definitely uh, is a just adjustment all the way around um, because, you know, plays are going to be drawn up differently and, and run game stuff is, you know, you don't have to block another guy because that, the guy's not there in, 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 in you know, uh, American football. So, um, yeah, definitely adjustment all the way around. We pick up with Curtis discussing why he chose to not enter the transfer portal in 2022 after his breakout season at Ohio. Yeah, um, I, I mean, we definitely did bring in a lot of guys and, and use the portal um, on offense for sure. Brought in some great running backs, you know, Justice Ellison, Elijah Green, 
um, from uh, Wake and, and then UNC, respectively. And then um, two standout running backs from JMU as well that came with Coach Signetti. And so we were, we were a really stacked running back room. Uh, but then you look at the receivers and we probably about get, probably have about eight guys that could, could start, you know. And so we have a really deep receiver room as well coming from a mix from last year, a couple guys on, you know, Big Ten, you know, all Big Ten teams. Um, and then guys coming from various schools as well from the portal, uh, one coming from Ohio as well. Um, and so the, the talent is is definitely surrounding this offense. Um, and we, um, uh, Indiana uh, in last year had a really good, defense as well. Um, and so we worked, retained a lot of the guys uh, and then kind of filled some holes in where, where we, need to, we needed to. And so I think we have a really well-rounded team. Uh, I think the biggest thing that we have is that um, we have an older team. So guys that want to win, guys that are here to, to um, focus on football and, and focus on the goals that we have as a team. And so it, it's really exciting when you, you get to know and I've gotten to know uh, the guys in the team um, in, in how they uh, share the same goals and, and, and values that I do. Um, and, it, and it makes you really want to work work hard for them. Um, and it's just exciting going into this year. What was your favorite moment of the spring? If you could pick one, what was kind of the highlight from spring practice up to this point? I, I don't know. There was one of the practices where the offense was just on fire. We were doing two-minute drills and uh, I think we had we had four two minute drills, uh, ones with the twos, so twos two with the ones, and then anyways, basically it was it was four two minute uh, sessions um, where where the offense went down, scored every single time, and, and there was a lot of energy, and um, I feel like some, a lot of people saw the potential of the team, um, and even even the defense, even though you know we scored on them a bunch, they you know um, seemed seemed kind of happy because it was definitely. Um, um, something special um, and something that we are able to build on and, and just brought us closer definitely as, as a team as the whole spring did. Defense probably got a sense for man we might not be completely responsible for keeping this team in games this year. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Absolutely yeah yeah I mean they, they they're a great group um, and they make us better every 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 day so absolutely. Was there a defensive play in the spring where you had your kind of welcoming to oh this is a this is a higher level of practice day to day than maybe I had in the past. Uh, I mean, the first play of uh, of team that we had in spring ball was uh, it was a it was a tight throw, and I didn't think the uh, DB would make that good of a break on it right away, and so that was kind of a welcome. And, and uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's just hats off to the the athletes that we have on defense. There, just you could tell you could tell everybody is elite at a at a very high level for, uh, for Indiana. So exciting, exciting to be heading into the season. Was there uh and kind of last question in the spring, was there any like meeting, any, any, any coaching specifically that you remember from that spring run where there was just a message that you feel like really resonated across this new roster? Yeah, I, I think coach Signetti, uh, he's a man of few words, but he's, he, he you know, he influential when he does. And, and so, I think the biggest thing that he said, and he said it a couple of times, but um, he kind of just mentioned the, the games last year that Indiana had and they ended up losing a couple of them. And, you know, he said that, you know, we're just a lot of them are one score games. And so um, we're going to build this team to make sure that we, you know, we're on the other end of them. Um, and, and a lot of the guys that were on the team last year knows how close those games were. Um, and that um, just to hear that, the the coaches have confidence in, in them to uh, flip it for the next year. Uh, shows a lot. Shows a lot about the character of, of the coaches, um, and it brought a lot of confidence into to the team, especially the guys that were there last year. Um, and definitely showed that the record last year wasn't uh, necessarily um, you know the the talent level of the team. I could see how that would be really really powerful for everybody, especially from a new coach. You'll have a lot of people come in. And there's a there's nerves that hey, uh, this person's going to bring in their people. Am I going to be valued in the same way I was valued by the previous staff? So it sounds like everyone here and hey, you were really close last year, and I'm here to help you get over that hump and see a different result. Really resonated. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And that's uh, that's definitely what him, Coach Signetti, and, and the coaches bring. So. 
After learning how his experience in Ohio and playing with his brother laid a solid foundation for what was to come, we moved to Curtis describing how he knew this summer that the roster at Indiana was primed for a breakout season. Um, you even talked about the coach, coaching staff sharing your beliefs. One of my favorite questions to ask any athlete of faith is what the moment of your football career was so far where you felt the most connected to your faith because I always get incredible. There's, there's always at least one or two. I think this Indiana story sounds like one already where you were just plopped in the perfect place and you're feeling that already. And I'm, that makes me fired up for you, but maybe speak to on the field a moment where you just felt the presence of God behind you. I mean, there's, there's so many moments that I, I feel, uh, you know, God with me and, and um, helped me through, you know, a, a moment in my life, but, you know, on the field and in the play and all that. And, you know, I think one of the biggest ways that I felt um, his presence was actually when I got injured in that 22 season, because my life kind of just got, you know, struck down, you know, I was having a great year, the team was on a roll. Um, I felt like this was like, I was in the, you know, feeling the best of it and I have. And, and then I kind of hit rock bottom when, you know, found out tore my ACL and needed surgery and I was done for the year. But compared to my other, other injuries that I've, I've, I've sustained that that was the one that I, I felt like I, if I felt, you know, the, the transition and the, and the recovery was, was easier. And I think it was, it was kind of like I, God had his hand on my shoulder and he was saying, uh, I'm going to be with you and it's going to be all right. You know? And, and at that time, obviously I didn't know what, a, what that meant. And, um, but it was, I was much, you know, calmer and, and much more accepting. Obviously I wasn't, you know, in the, in the best mood all the time, but I felt like my purpose wasn't, in, wasn't, um, you know, to play football. It was, you know, for bigger things in, in God, you know, showed me that. And then when I was able to start the recovery process, um, I had kind of had a new sense of, you know, why am I playing football? You know, I'm playing it to, to glorify God and, and not play to, you know, you know, glorify myself kind of thing. And so it, it was, it was just that whole process and transition, you know, um, really spoke to me and, and, you know, I felt like God really had a big process in, in coming to Indiana. Um, and I'm grateful to be here. And, and I think that was a big, you know, it can't, it took a couple of years to kind of understand what he was saying, but, you know, I, I feel very strongly that he's been with me this every step of the way. Did the earlier injuries help you grow your faith because that challenged you to a level where you had to get stronger in your faith than maybe you had been in the past that when you got hit with an injury again, this time after seeing the success and seeing what your trust in God allowed you to accomplish that you're able to have a greater level of faith and trust this most most recent time. So you're able to say, all right, I kind of know now that I'm going to be able to get up stronger than ever because that's what's happened the last time I put my faith in God and allowed the process to unfold itself. Yeah, hundred percent. I think you, you kind of hit it, hit it on the head there. I, you know, kind of, I had three surgeries in, in college and thankfully didn't miss too many games with those, but my first two before the, the ACL in 22, I, they were a lot harder uh, to, to come back from because I didn't I, I don't feel like I was as strong in my faith. You know, I didn't really um, trust him enough and, and kind of was, you know, playing the blame game, kind of feeling like, why, why is this happening? You know, is this not why I'm here? Like, is this, you know, I'm, I was supposed to, you know, maybe reach these, reach those expectations, you know, that have been put on me kind of thing. And, and, and all those those thoughts that, you know, aren't productive in any way. But um, it was definitely helped grow my faith from, you know, those surgeries until when I hit in 22 and when I got injured, I was definitely in my strongest faith. And I, you know, I trusted, I was trusting the process, even though it was very hard, but it was definitely, it was, it's so much easier to, to go through a, a adversity like that when uh, you know you're not alone. Uh, and so I think exactly what you were saying, it, you know, um, it was much easier. And I believe not every time, because um, life's different for everyone's path, but sometimes I feel like injuries happen to slow us down in general. Like even there are times where I'll hit my knee on a coffee table on the simplest level. And I feel like I'm kind of getting a nudge like, hey, maybe you should be thinking about something. Maybe you should stop for a second. Um, but in the more macro, is there a feeling in this moment that those injuries were a nudge for, hey, 
I'm, there's something greater that has to happen that I'm allowing that, that needs some more time to express itself. Yeah. Um, I, I, one of the biggest things that I learned throughout that process and, and a lot of my so the support system, the great friendships that I, I developed, but was that where's my identity in, in, you know, is my identity in sport. And I think throughout the majority of my early college career, my identity was in sport. And so however practice went that day, however, you know, the, the game went or whatever, you know, that's dictated, you know, kind of who I was at that time. Right. And, and um, the more I grew in my faith, the more I realized that my identity is in, in Jesus and not uh, my sport. And so, you know, I may have had a bad practice, may have a bad throw, but knowing that no matter what, you know, Jesus is proud of me. He's, 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 he's proud that I'm there and he's, you know, I'm, I go every day to work to glorify him. And that became way easier to, to handle situations and be able to bounce back and, and continue to, to work and grow. Has that prepared you for the Big Ten? in a way that maybe the 2022 version and the 2023 version would not have been prepared to come into a, this conference as an underdog and prepare for success this season, because there's gotta be something about when it was just you, the football player, that's a lot of weight as you're talking about where there's some weight that comes off with this understanding that I am so much more than that that maybe I can then be transcendent on the field and have those type of performances that maybe you got to witness your brother having in BC, for example, but hopefully do that in the, in the big 10 this season. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it's, I have a completely new mindset, you know, going into the last couple of years um, and uh, being able to, you know, have there's so much pressure comes with playing quarterback, especially in the Big Ten now. And so you got to be able to, you know, have a good head on your shoulders. And, and uh, in, in my case, you know, I know why I'm playing. Um, I know I've been given a gift to, to play and, and be able to share, you know, the gospel and use my platform as that and, and, and be able to glorify God, like I mentioned, through, you know, playing. And so it helps with, with the pressure and, and knowing that, God's with me. He's, he's there every way. And uh, I just look forward to being able to glorify him in the best possible way and, and helping this team uh, win uh, as many games as possible and reach, reach all of our goals that we, we, we set. It is very clear that Indiana is on the verge of being able to achieve any goal that they set out to. And I don't think that I could ever overlook them in any game following this interview and watching them all season. And after listening, I'm sure that you feel the exact same way. And I just can't wait to watch it all unfold. And uh, hope you enjoyed this interview as much as we did. If you want to hear more conversations with elite college football quarterbacks, make sure to subscribe to our channel on YouTube and our podcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify.